Join me right now is UFC Bantamweight Submission Wizard, Manny Bermudez. What's going on, Manny? How much, man? How are you? Good, good, man. Uh, first off, I want to talk about the Bermuda Triangle. Black belts, wrestlers, grapplers, sons, fathers. You're hitting that submission from all positions, man. When will people learn to not play with fire? Uh, hopefully never. Hopefully they keep playing with the fire. <laughs> I keep getting these uh, these submissions quick, but, uh, you know, you, you can't count on one thing forever. So I, I'm sure people are going to be hip to it. And then uh, by, by the time they get onto it, I'm pretty sure I'll have something to, you know, <laughs> to, to back it up. Well, speaking of something, something else to back it up, I know you got a lot of submissions in your arsenal. What is a submission that you have but no one has seen that you would like to hit in the octagon to make history? Oh, submission. I don't know. I, so when I was younger, I used to always hit those, uh, you know, the go-go platas where you, you get the foot in front of the neck and all that. Uh, so I actually got pretty good at those. But um, that's one of those moves that, that it's very difficult to hit. And if the right situation ever comes up, then, then I'll do it, obviously. But uh, I'm not going into a fight just being like, I'm going to hit the, <laughs> you know, go-go plata. But hopefully one day I'll get one. Well, it seems like you're going to have a long career in the UFC, so you're going to have a lot of opportunities, it looks like. Uh, hopefully. Well, let's go back to your last fight, UFC Hamburg. You finished Davy Grant in under a minute. I think it was the, like the second fastest finish for you in your career. Am I right? Yeah, I don't know. I, I get them all mixed up with my amateur, too, because uh, my amateur had a lot of really fast finishes, but... um. Yeah, it was definitely, one, I think it was in a minute or under a minute. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a quick one, but it's always nice going in there and just getting in and out, doing my job. And then, like, you know, you, you touch your face a little after and you're like, oh, I'm actually perfectly fine. So you get to enjoy the rest of the vacation, kind of, you know? Definitely. After that uh, fight, you said your coaches predicted that outcome. What exactly did they see that made them so confident? Um. So. We, we knew Davey was a tough guy. He, like, you know, he's a veteran. He had been through the Ultimate Fighter, all that. But uh, it, I think what what my coaches saw was that uh, I put a lot of pressure on my fights, you know. And, and I think that they thought that he wasn't going to expect that much pressure when, when we started to fight. And uh, honestly, I don't even think it was the pressure. I think he just left his chin open and then I found it. And then, you know, that's kind of the, the downward spiral. That was the first step going down. Into, into me choking him out but uh you know it, it, to be to be fair though like i don't think he expected it i think he was just you know taken aback by the fact that i had punch and power and then um you know i didn't have to take him down i think he was expecting me to, me to shoot in on him and then he'd have like i'm sure he wrestled for months in order to prepare for it and then uh that, that took him by surprise and <laughs> you know all the wrestling goes to good goes to nothing all right now you got benito lopez he was originally lined up for UFC 233, but the event was canceled. Did you take a big hit by them rescheduling the fight? No. Uh, you know, so I actually didn't really necessarily want to fight over in California just because they have those, uh, you know, the, the weight guidelines over there. So I, I was a little bit like I took the fight, but I was like, I wish it was happening literally anywhere else where they wouldn't be so strict on the, on the, you know, the rehydration and all that. But, uh, you know, and it, it, it just pushed the, the fight camp back. I think it was like two or three weeks. It wasn't anything too crazy. So, um, hearing it was in Arizona, you know, and it was the first event on ESPN, like the first time it's all on ESPN. I thought that was really cool. So I think it was a worthwhile, uh, you know, worthwhile move for me at least. Yeah, that one thing about the ESPN, like there's like the UFC on ESPN Plus and then there's the UFC on ESPN. That's very confusing. Do you think so? Yeah, yeah. No, so I actually went in person to go see the uh, the Brooklyn card, which was half ESPN, half um, ESPN Plus. And, and so I was, I was in the crowd and I was secretly like, I'm so glad that I'm not you know, on ESPN Plus where all my friends have to go, like, <laughs> download this app in order to go see me fight. It's just going to be on, on TVs everywhere now. So it's, it's a little little easier for everybody to, to, to watch my fight. Uh, you get a little more exposure that way, too, even though I'm still on a, pre a preliminary card. I'm not on the main card. But it's, um, 
hopefully it's really good for my career, you know? It seems like Lopez's undefeated record is a big selling point for you. What exactly makes that so attractive? So, you know, you can't put anything past somebody who's who's done as much as he's done, you know, or, you know, as much as I've done, too. Uh, it's not easy that you get to be, you know, 9-0 and at our weight class in, in, in the sport. And uh, I think I think the fact that it's so difficult makes it, you know, really interesting that these two guys that, that are both undefeated are coming in. We're both fresh to the UFC. I think Benito's had – he's had one contender fight and then he had one UFC fight. And I had two UFC fights and we're both undefeated in the UFC. And so now it's going to – it's kind of like – Who's taking the next step? Who's take? Who's you know cutting the other one down in order to, to make this fight you know to make the next fight happen? So I don't think there's anybody else in the division either that's uh, undefeated. Once you know me and him fight, the winner is going to be the only undefeated guy in the division too. So I think that's going to be really interesting. South Shore Sports Fighting, tell me about the team and the coaches you're working with over there. Yeah, so so my team's just you know some of the best people ever. They are. Uh, when I was younger, I wouldn't always, you know, have the money to pay or, you know, be able to make it all the time. So they would just let me train for free. And they, they knew how much I loved it. And they taught me since I was 13, you know, they, they brought me through all the milestones, the grappling tournaments and like my first amateur fights. Uh, and they, they always just took care of me so well that, you know, I'm just super proud to be a part of the school. I'm super proud to be able to kind of, you know, be a representation of, of the school that because i've only trained i've cross trained at other gyms you know just like a day a week or just something like that just to mix it up but my, my whole fight everything i learned it was through south Shore sport fighting so i feel really uh proud to be a product of their school yeah it seems like they invested a lot in you and now you get to pay them back by putting them on the map through the ufc yeah, exactly and, that, and I don't know, it makes me really proud to be able to do that yeah, man, that's a great story. Um, it seems like your hands are coming along well. You're focusing a lot on your boxing. Uh, talk about that uh, that development of your striking. Yeah, no, um, you know, it's, it's not because I, I, I when I started training, I started training everything at once. You know, it wasn't that it was just, you know, gra only grappling. It was just, uh, you know, for, for longevity's sake, you get really good at, you know, grabbing a neck. You finish fights quicker. Um, so I have the same amount of time, you know, kickboxing and boxing that I do grappling. <laughs> so I, I think people are a little surprised, but I don't think they should be, you know, because I, like, I don't assume Benito has never grappled, <laughs> you know, I think that when, when I grab him, he's going to have a good defense and I think he's going to, uh, you know, be hip to, to getting choked out too, especially being from team alpha male. But, um, no, I mean, I've done, I've done it for a while, so it's all just, being more comfortable doing it you know so do you feel that because of that aspect that he brings to this fight this will be a stand-up war um well I, I think the thing with fights is you never know where it's gonna go so i think it's gonna be you know there's gonna be a point where I, i'm standing with benito and there's gonna be a point where benito's on the ground with me i don't think there's gonna be any set you know you can't just be like oh the whole fight i'm just gonna stay on my feet or oh the whole fight i'm gonna i'm gonna stay on the ground it, you always have to be good at everything and, and be able to not stress out, not, you know, impose your game plan. You, you have to be a complete fighter in this game, and especially now, too, with all these kids coming up that have been training, you know, since they were teenagers, since, since they were young. Uh, I think they're all changing the sport. You seem to know what path you want to take. Who is on the hit list and where do you want to be sitting by the end of the year? I mean, obviously, a lot, I would love to be undefeated by the end of the year. Um, we we have a name in mind that I'm thinking about calling out uh, after the fight, but I think I'm going to keep it a secret until then. But, um, I don't know, end, end of the year, obviously, you want to try to hit those top 10, top 15 guys. Talking about the Bantamweight division, TJ Dillashaw is busy chasing around Henry Cejudo right now, so it kind of stalls uh -huh. out the division at the top. What are your thoughts on the state of the, the division right now? Well, I mean, I think Marlon Moraes, he's been he's been a sleeper for a while. You know, he's been a killer. 
Uh, he just beat a Sun Sao, and a Sun Sao is no joke either. I think that the the right thing to do would be to have uh, Moraes fight TJ for for the belt, you know, just to see where where he ends up in the division. But you know, the whole thing with the with the stoppage with TJ and everyone saying it was an early stoppage that was kind of weird. But you know, uh, preferably for me, <laughs> you know, selfishly, I think I would like to see. How, how the division is going strictly at 135, not necessarily with the 25ers, unless the 25 division is now, you know, starting to come up to 35 because, you know, that whole deal with Dana and them getting dissolved. I think it's an interesting time for the Bantamweight division. You said earlier that you were at the the fights, right, at UFC Brooklyn. Did you yeah. feel that it was an early stoppage? I Personally, I didn't just because – uh tj i don't know it was it was from i think he cut too much weight it was from the first push he was like he was falling down and i think he got dropped it looked like three times from my point of view at least and and in my head honestly i was thinking i I thought it was a perfect stoppage from where i was sitting because seeing it live and seeing it on tv it's two different things you know um it looked like he was taking clean shots and obviously tj's you know tj's a killer and tj doesn't want to you know leave it to the hands of uh, of somebody that's gonna, you know, give him that way out. But uh, if I was the rep, I would have stopped it too. Do you feel that for guys like you who are up and coming in the division, TJ kind of stalling out the division is beneficial for you to kind of move up in the ranks and, and push for fights with guys that are waiting? Yeah, no, it's it's cool because um, you know, now now we get all this exciting new talent. That same night, I saw that kid Co- Corey Sandhagen, I think his name. Is. Yeah, I yeah. saw him. I, he, you know, he put on a good show too. Uh, there's guys like you know, there's Sean O'Malley out there. There's uh, you know, me and Benito. You know, there's a lot of new guys coming up, and, and I think actually, for for the uh, Australia card, I think Ricky Simon's fighting Ronnie Yaya too. So that, uh, it's 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 an exciting time for sure. And I think once a couple of these bantamweight fights get get made and and happen, I think we're gonna see you know who stands where and then what good matchups can be made. But uh, as for the title, I think Marlon deserves it, though. All right. February 17th, UFC on ESPN1. Manny Bermudez faces Benito Lopez. Thanks, Manny, for your time, and good luck on your fight, sir. Thank you very much. Hey, take care, man.